So did you know there's three different shortcuts that you can use to actually duplicate layers and objects in Adobe Photoshop? Well, in this video, we're going to cover exactly how those three shortcuts work and why you might want to use them. At the end of the video, we're also actually going to have another bonus shortcut, which actually allows you to repeat the duplications that you've already made. Cool, so we're in Adobe Photoshop, and as you can see, what we've got is just a very simple shape layer. And as you can see, I've just got a slightly different blending mode on it just to make it slightly more interesting. So like I said, there are three different shortcuts that you can use to duplicate layers in Adobe Photoshop. And what we're going to do is start off with one or two of the more common ones that you might also use in other software, and then progress onto one or two other shortcuts that you might not know, which can be very useful and save you a lot of time. So the first way to be able to duplicate anything, just like you would do in any other software, is you can copy and paste your object. So the easiest way to copy is to press Command and C, or Control and C if you're on Windows. And then the easiest way to paste is to press Command and V, or Control and V for Windows. And as you can see, we now have a copy of our object. Now the first immediate issue that we had was if I just quickly undo that by pressing Command and Z, or Control and Z for Windows, the duplicate isn't actually placed directly on top of the original shape that we had. So as you can see, there's a distance between our two shapes. And in many cases, we actually want to have a direct duplicate exactly on top of our original source. So this is one of the immediate limitations of this method. So in order to combat that, what we can actually do is duplicate the image directly instead of having to copy and paste it, which effectively is two separate shortcuts. So if I quickly undo that, Command and Z once again. So in order to actually duplicate our shape or any other layer for that fact, it doesn't really matter what you have. It could be a text object or a vector object too. All you have to do is press Command and J or Control and J for Windows. And as you can see, this has created another copy. So as you can see in the layers panel, we have two separate layers. And all it's done is it's added copy to the new duplicated version of our layer. We now have this layer on top of our original layer. So this can be very useful. Obviously, if you want to affect one of the shapes, but you don't want to affect both. So for example, say you wanted to mask the top shape. And if I just bring up the brush tool, as you can see, I can cut away part of that, but then we always still have the original image behind it because we duplicated our shape directly on top of our original source. So once again, I'm gonna quickly undo that. So the next method we can do is, what if we want to actually be able to move our shape directly? In both cases, in the first two shortcuts, either the duplicate was placed directly on top of what we already had, or it was placed in a random position. But what if we want to be able to directly move our new duplicate while holding down our shortcut? Well, in order to do that, it's actually very similar to any other Adobe software. All you have to do is hold Option or Alt on your keyboard, depending if you're on Windows and Mac. As you can see, your cursor changes, so you have a new black arrow with a white arrow behind it. But what you can do is just hold and drag on any layer or object, and it will actually duplicate that item, and you can just hold onto it and drag it wherever you want it. So for example, I can make another duplicate just to right here. I can hold Shift just like when we have Free Transform in order to snap it to the same vertical axis as our original source material. And I can just release, and as you can see, I now have a new duplicate. Great, so those are essentially the three different shortcuts you can use to actually duplicate your object. But what if you actually want to duplicate an object multiple times, and you don't want to have to fiddle around with actually moving it every single time? So for example, if I undo this, let's move our original shape to the left here, and I'm just going to press Command and T to free transform our shape and make it a bit smaller, just so we have a bit more space to work in and then I'll press enter just to make sure we're happy with those changes. Now this next shortcut does involve a few different steps, but it's still quicker than actually doing this manually. So essentially the process we're trying to do is if I quickly go back to that last shortcut that we had, where we held option and then moved and dragged our shape to the right, I've now created a new duplicate of what we already had. Now what if I wanted to do this again? I actually move this to the right using that same shortcut. The distance will be the same because I can use those guides that we have, but if I wanted to do this over and over again, perhaps I wanted a row of say 10 pentagons, this might take quite a long time. So there's actually a much easier way that we can do this. So if I undo this once again, so it involves a few steps, like I said, but essentially what we have to do is we have to start by holding Option or Alt on our keyboard. And then at the same time, we have to press Command and T, in other words, free transform. So that'd be Control and T for Windows. So all together, you'd be holding Option, Control and T or Option, Command, and T. And this basically brings our shape into the free transform mode. Now what you can do is you can move your shape in whatever direction that you want. You can still hold Shift if you want to keep it on a particular axis. 
And then once you're happy with the distancing, all you have to do is let go and then press enter on your keyboard. So this was essentially the first half of our shortcut. The second half of the shortcut essentially repeats this process so we get an entire row of shapes. So there's quite a lot of keys you have to actually hold in for this next part of the shortcut, but it's still quicker than doing this all manually. So for Mac, the keys are Shift, Option, Command, and then T. And then for Windows, if you're on a Windows computer, it will be Shift, Alt, Control, and T. Every time I tap T, we create a new duplicate. Obviously, this will go on forever until you actually redo the first half of our shortcut. So for example, if we wanted to go back to our first original shape here and just making sure that's selected, if we repeat the first half of the shortcut, so that was hold option or alt and press command and T in order to free transform, then move our shape in whichever direction we want. So for example, I'll move it downwards Can hold shift in order to keep it in axis and then press enter in order to confirm that. Then if I press that really long shortcut once again, so command, shift, and option, or control, shift, and alt, and then tap T, I can create duplicates in that direction too. So that shortcut, basically at the end, it's a little bonus shortcut. You might find it a bit annoying to learn at first, but as you can see, it can save you a lot of time. And actually, once you've practiced it once or twice, it will become second nature. If you're interested in learning more shortcuts in Adobe Photoshop, then do check out the video in the top right hand corner. In that video, we actually break down several shortcuts that can increase your speed using the brush tool. And otherwise, do remember to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the content. And do remember to subscribe to make sure you never miss a new Photoshop or Illustrator tutorial.